Anxiety towards dental therapy has not changed significantly over the past 50 years. Publications report that about 5 to 20 percent of Americans voluntarily delay or avoid having needed dental treatment because of fear and anxiety. This avoidance behavior can become rather costly for a patient, resulting in compromised health and quality of life. As professionals and providers, it is imperative to work together in order to encourage patient ease in the dental office. All it takes is a touch of compassion. Listen to the patient in the patient's language, which means getting in touch with the patient in the nonverbal sense. It means mirroring our patient, a word called harage. Harage is a Japanese word. It means communicating gut to gut. It is the nonverbal communication. It's sitting eye level with your patient. It's using the same tone and tempo in your voice that the patient uses. It's using the same expressions of your face, of your body language. It's an amazing experience as you get in tune with your patient. You actually start to feel what your patient's feeling. And through that feeling, you can develop a true empathy that allows the two of you to communicate at a level that allows the patient to finally start to become more comfortable. The nurse was sitting on the edge of the bed and she had a cool face cloth over the gentleman's forehead and she was holding his arm and simply stroking it. And she was just talking gently into his ear and he calmed right down. Now, that nurse did not have a magic elixir. She didn't have a magical pill, a wave of wand, that all his discomfort went away. But what she did was cared for him. And I never forgot that. Everybody has a story, and I think it's up to the dentist to get that story in the open so that you can better treat the patient. It's important to understand that you're not alone. When we see a patient that's under duress, stressed out, that suffered a loss possibly, even beyond a fear related to the dental visit, it's such an easy thing to extend compassion by, by touching their shoulder and making them feel that they're in a place where they're going to be treated the way I would want to be treated. When patients are able to get through these steps to the point where now they're in continuing care, it is one of the most freeing moments for a truly high fear patient. That fear that they have is an area of their life that they feel they can't control, and now they can. And it's a huge step in self-esteem and in overall health for that reason. The intent of the Surgeon General's report on oral health is to alert Americans to the full meaning of oral health and its importance to general health and well-being. The report emphasizes that healthcare providers should be ready, willing, and able to work in collaboration to provide optimal health care for their patients. The best way to make interprofessional relationships a reality is basically just having open communication with all the different health professionals that your particular patient is seeing. So not being afraid to get on the phone and call their physician or call if they have a social worker or if they have a nurse, um, just to make sure that you guys are all kind of discussing what kind of treatment this patient needs. As providers and professionals, let us not work for or against one another, but with each other to become a symbol of unity, to understand the whole patient, to provide comprehensive care, and to do it all with a compassionate touch. 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 Compassionate touch.